So I was just making breakfast for cruising along and Dylan's just stopped the engine. Run down. Holy shit. It's a it must be wrapped around the prop, yeah? Yeah, I reckon. Just stopped the engine straight, like boom. Looks like a big uh tarp. Kind of looks like fabric. Canvas maybe? Uh, it's kind of back under the boat again. Yeah, I, I can't really get it. But Do you want me to go forward with the other end? Might have to jump in. Every cruiser we've met has run over fishing net, tarps, you name it, everything. We don't want to go into the wind, uh, have the wind bring us around because we'll start sailing. Yeah, but I've got to get this thing out. I know. Can you have a line behind the thing as well, please? Maybe we should bring this, the sail down. It's huge. I think we should bring the sail down. I'll just have a quick look. Okay. Oh my god. Now the sail's filling, and I don't want to start the engine. Where is he? One more try. I think I almost got it. Okay, hold on, but I need to turn the other engine on because we're, we're, sa we're about to start sailing. I just need to steer us back into the wind, okay? Can you stay away? Yeah, but that's... that's no, don't okay. turn the engine on. All right. It stresses me out because I think about, imagine if this happens if, happened if we were failing at night time. Yeah. Yeah. Is this a wrapped around the other prop? Oh, it's so big. No, but it's, it's over this side, you know? Can you grab it with the boat hook again and pull it out? Because what the current's probably pushing it that way. I need to cut it. I need to cut it. Here you go. That's a huge tarp that's come off a cruise ship or a, a huge tarp that's come off a container ship or something. I've got a breeze stuff on yeah. it, so it's still on the prop, but... Have um, you, did you cut your hands? A little bit, but it's fine. I'll get you a towel? No, I'm good. Show us your hands, Holy are okay? Goody. Aww. Such a big tarp, like big industrial tarp. Um, that kind of just wrap itself around the prop. Stop the engine just getting its tracks. Then I have to get down under there. It freaks me out a little because like the boat moves around so much. Don't you? No, it, it, not really. It, it, nothing's really down moving down under there. So it is like you cut it away, but there's like still a like segment. Yeah, yeah. I just need to pull it off from the prop, from like two of the blades. Oh my god. So Jill's just gone to check the engine now, um, but yeah, it just stopped us dead in our tracks. Um, so I guess that's the beauty of having thinking, the twin engines. Catamaran. I was thinking oil or something, because I looked back and there was just a blue streak behind us. Something was coming out of the engine. Can you yeah, hold that? I'm, I'm like, gonna... oh, what, what, how the fuck would that happen? Just weird thoughts, you know? That you have when something's gone wrong. She wanted to put the other engine on so we were at least moving and not sailing. But there's not there's not a lot of wind today, um, and and that would have that would have tangled the, the bloody thing up in the other prop because it was sitting the, the whole 
tarp was sitting underneath the other side because we are getting dragged this way. Woo! So, yeah, hectic. I'm not going to sit on the front of the boat. I'm like watching for things the whole time. Oh, you wouldn't have seen that anyway. It's blow yeah, you wouldn't have seen that. It was below the water. It's really dirty water here too. But it stopped the engine like back. Like within a second, the engine was stopped and I was like, whoa! It was like, because the oil pressure um, alarm came on. I think if we find a bit clearer water, because it's hard to see down there, you can't, you can't really see much. So I was like, always had to be trying to get close so I can see where I was cutting. I just hope it hasn't done any damage to the boat. the sail down uh, and we've just kind of faced into the swell it's not huge swell or anything um, and we've made sure the coast is clear we're still pretty close to all this um, but Dylan's gone back down to cut the rest of it off and he's just gonna see if the prop is meant just really don't want to be too much into this swell because I just don't want the boat to be moving around under there for him so he's gonna yeah cut the rest off and uh, just make sure the the, the right, shaft is bent or the prop is bent. How'd you go? I think we're good. Yeah? You think it's off? Yeah, I think it's off. Have a, have a look. I'd love to be able to like grab it out of the water and, and stop it from uh, getting that. you know another cruiser's boat or even a big ship's boat but we just can't get it. That was still as you can see a huge chunk around the prop and around the shaft. Do you think there's any damage? No, there's a lot of fishing line around it though. Oh is it as well? Yeah I think it's fishing line. You couldn't get that off though? Nah. Ooh. You're awesome, Dylan. Okay, after this morning's ordeal with the giant tarp, we are now sailing, well, motor sailing, um, so we can make some time up. So we were kind of inching along there at maybe like between two and three knots earlier with the one engine and you know, there was a downtime when Dylan was trying to get the tarp off the prop, so we're trying to make up for lost time, and now we're averaging about five knots, um, which should get us into the anchorage about 7.38, which is not great, but... We're current, mate. Yeah, we've still got a current against us. Maybe when we get out around the corner, the... Speed through the water is almost seven. Yeah. Speed over ground is seven. Uh, no, No, oh, yeah, through the water, because there's a current, two knot current against us, so... Yeah. Nice to know we've got both sails up and both engines on to try and get there uh, in a reasonable amount of time. It's not time to make a change. Just relax, take it easy. You're still young. That's your fault There's so much you have to know Find a girl Settle down If you want You can marry Look at me I am old But I'm happy I was once like you are now And I know that it's not easy To become It is 42 and we have finally dropped anchor um, just on the second attempt there super windy 
um, what are we at now? 16, 17 knots. Um, the bay that we've anchored in is protected from the swell, but it's certainly not protected from the wind. Um, so yeah, hopefully we get some sleep tonight. We didn't really get much sleep last night. I think just un unknown anxieties throughout our sleep of just, you know, the anxieties of being back on anchor or whatever, that you don't even think that you have, but you must because you don't sleep. Dylan's in his undies. I'm done for the season. <laughs> I'm done for the bloody season. We're both really sunburned. We didn't get any sleep because we were anxious. We'll put this cover up back up so we're not, so we can hear because it's so windy. 18 knots, ew. Morning, YouTube. We're in Jason's Bay. Um, had an okay sleep, I believe. Probably woke up a few times, but it's pretty calm. Nice and flat. And I don't know if this is smoke or fog or what, but I woke up and there's, you can't really see much. It's hard to tell on the camera there. Um, we've had a coffee um, and we're going to take off to Cebu Island today. So today will only be a short one, six hours at our slowest speed. Haven't looked at currents or anything today because I don't think we're affected as much today compared to yesterday because it's not a straight, it's open open sort of water um and yeah weather should be good i think there's not a lot of wind around um and then once we're in cebu and tiamen around uh, thursday friday saturday three days there's like no wind so that's kind of it's kind of good because hopefully that means it'll be nice and calm there but we're expecting squally conditions because that's everything I've read. It's always saying that there's heaps of squall, squalls and storms this time of year. A bit of moisture around. Look at this. Look at the screen. Hopefully we don't run into anything today and wrap anything around our prop. That'd be nice. Look at all this coral spawn. I rigged up this little hose. Come have a look, vlog. It might fall off. I don't know. You tie a little thing onto it. Yeah, like, that'd be a good idea. Like the water might as a string lift it up. Onto the, um... Yeah, because we're getting exhaust fumed out. Tying this hose on so that we don't lose it. Hopefully, that cuts back some of the fumes because the diesel fumes get really full on sometimes on the boat when we're. Um, when we're, especially when we're downwind or just when there's no wind at all and they're kind of the fumes kind of seem to get stuck inside the cockpit I guess because of the clear covers at the front and it just circulates in the cockpit and it's like whoa but it's a funny morning like it's really it's not overcast it's like it's foggy or it's like sea mist or maybe it's um, smoke Flat. Um, the swell's coming down from the last few storms that have passed north, like way north, and it's um, it's it's all coming down from from then. And um, so tomorrow and the next day, it's going to be um, flat calm seas, or well, not flat calm, but like it was today, like half a meter. So we tried this anchorage here in the western side of Palau Cebu, um, but there's not much going on there and um, I want to go ashore on a beach so there is a nice there is a beach there but it looks like it's in the shallower part of the bay and and we probably just want to row in to a beach and um, you know we're pretty picky about beaches and know? we want it to be cruiser friendly because lots of places are not keen on 
people on sailboats for whatever reason. Yeah. And this place is meant to be food friendly. So yeah. I'd rather go somewhere where we know that we're going to be welcome and not shunned. Yep. Did you hear that? Yeah. It sounded like um, thunder or an airplane. Oh. Look at that, guys. Can you see that? Uh oh. And the thing is, you can't see that because no. it's so smoky and this thing could have been building up all day. And we haven't even noticed it. So we're gonna have to put out a bit more scope when we anchor. It's Wall City up in here. Uh, they pass over it within an hour um, and everything's usually pretty good, but sometimes they can reach, you know, 50 knot winds. you sometime I want to spend some time with you just the two of us we can make it if we try just the two of us so we've just pulled the dinghy up and we just are wandering around Rimba Resort, Rimba yeah, Resort. Yeah. Yeah. and it's super cute it's like um, like thatch roofs and um, so I don't know if you can see but there's blue moon out there it's not doing too bad and uh, you can kind of see a lot more clearly the reef line um, from here oh yeah she's rolling now a little bit rolling out there for her uh, yeah and so this is like very very cool so we're just following this sign here labeled jungle and we're gonna follow the path um, around the island and kind of check out the other resorts and the other beaches and get some walking in because since Singapore, we haven't really walked much, have we, Dil? No, it could be on, like, on, on, at a beach, like on an island. The time has come for us to cut back on the frequency of our episodes. A reminder, our episodes are not in real time. The other world is calling. Our sailing kitty has inevitably dried up and we must return to work to fuel the next adventure, whatever that may be. As our patrons already know, since being back in Australia, we've relocated to Perth on the West Coast. We've been adjusting to life on land, exploring Western Australia's stunning beaches and islands, hiking, biking, and getting familiar with our new home. We are both now working full-time, and as such, I am unable to dedicate such long hours to exclusively editing our content. I am hoping to produce episodes every two weeks moving forward. The good news is, we still have lots of exciting content to share with you. Upcoming episodes will see us sailing to idyllic white sand islands, braving crazy tropical storms, diving world-class coral reef systems, befriending the incredible locals, and just being our authentic selves. Dylan and I are so grateful for the huge amount of support we've received. The positivity, encouragement, and genuine interest from our patrons, PayPal contributors, and viewers has been overwhelming. So thank you. The simple act of taking time to leave us a comment demonstrates our journey resonates with so many of you. Each and every one of you has enabled and inspired us to pick up the camera and share our story like many sailors before us. Our greatest hope is that we have inspired others to do something that tests the ego, challenges relationships, enables personal growth, and ultimately brings true joy and fulfillment. If there's one thing we hoped our sailing channel would achieve, it's showing others you don't have to be special, talented, highly trained, or filthy rich to follow your dreams. Thanks for tuning in and joining us in another episode of Sailing Blue Moon. Since our episodes will no longer be released like clockwork each Wednesday, now is a good opportunity to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to be notified when we do release our episodes from now on, it's best if you take this moment to click that cute little bell down at the bottom right of this video. Go! Right, so now that that's done, you'll be reminded when the next episode is out. We'll be trekking across Palau Cebu before pulling up anchor and heading for a stunning anchorage on the nearby island of Palau Tinggi. Sailing Blue Moon videos are made possible by our patrons and viewers just like you. 
If you'd like to support our content creation while receiving perks in return, you might consider becoming a patron. If you enjoy our content, you can help us out by liking this video and subscribing if you haven't already. Don't forget to click the bell to the right to be notified of new episodes. We'd also love to hear from you, the viewer, so hit us up in the comments below.